Josie and Josie's Fun Kitchen getting ready to do another meal. So today I have to give you a little bit of story. My husband Andy, when I told him what I was going to do this morning, is he says, why are you making gumbo when it's warm outside? Okay, number one, my answer was because I want to. Number two, then I started thinking about it, is people in New Orleans and everywhere, if you have an opportunity to eat gumbo, are you not gonna eat gumbo? So anyway, this is what I'm gonna do today. So what I've done already is I have boiled cooked chicken breast, and I'm gonna quickly tell you some of the ingredients that we're gonna need, most of the ingredients, is a pound of okra, you're gonna have a pound of shrimp, I like to make it this way pound of lump crab meat, Cajun style andouille sausage. I like a lot of garlic, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cloves of garlic. I'm using three tomatoes, celery, green pepper, onion, lemon. So here's what we're gonna do. Oh, we have chicken stock and of course you have classic little hot sauce. In my Dutch oven, I am going to make a roux. You can make a roux that is a combination of, I'm using canola oil, canola oil and flour. And you're gonna put it, I'm gonna start up and heat this up, actually I'm gonna put it up on the front burner because it takes me a while. Um, because I'm going to stand here with my whisk and whisk it slowly. Do not walk away for more than 30 seconds because you can burn this. This will take a good half hour, 45 minutes. I've timed it one time. And if you are not careful and you do walk away, you're gonna have to start all over again. I personally do not like to make the roux in the oven. I like to do it and just put my love into it. Just stay in there and make the roux. And then I'll turn on the news or watch a TV show. I've been known to put a stool next to the pot. Then we're gonna take the, after I chop everything up, we're going to put the vegetables into the pot and then combine everything, and then it's gonna cook for about two and a half hours. So anyway, let's go. Also, before I forget, I'm a big one. I'm gonna put my hair back up in a ponytail, and I'm going to take this chef jacket off because it's hot. So I will be back. And uh, I'm preheating this. I'm gonna put the oil in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this shrimp and the crab meat and the meat back in the refrigerator since it takes about 40 minutes to do the roux. And put this back on top. Uh, everything else can stay out here. So I am going to put the oil in here. I have my big spoon. And slowly, I will put the flour in here and just start stirring with my whisk. And then, yeah, I just pay attention to this. So this is gonna take a while. Okay, so where you are, right now we're going to put in that flour. Can you hear it? And now just start stirring. Here we go. And what's nice about this Dutch oven is you can see that it's not square. So it's great for soups and something that you have to stir because of the rounded edges. Um, I'm going to turn this on actually very low. And it'll come up to a little boil and then you just keep stirring and stirring. So I can start chopping some of my things in the meantime, but I'll check back and show you the, the, how, the progression. The first thing that we're gonna do, I like to get this stuff off, is do the celery. I'll show you how I chop. And that, okay, clean that over. And I've already cut off the ends. Here we go.
we go. Got those done. And then we're going to open up this garlic. I like to smash it. It's easier to clean off. We'll chop that up. And we're going to get the onion. I'm gonna chop that up. This is the trash here. Actually, I have a trash can right underneath here, which is awesome. Throw that out, throw that out. And get this pepper and chop this. This is how I clean it out. It's easier to. Look at that. Easy, easy peasy. We're gonna chop this up. And then we're going to do the tomatoes. The way that I like to do the tomatoes is I like to use a serrated knife like this. And as you can tell, I love to use Worsthoff knives. I just cut this little piece off because I don't want that in there. Maybe take this out. But it's just easier for some, I just think it's easier to cut. Look at that. Boom, goes right through. We're gonna chop tomatoes, diced or chopped. You can call them diced, chopped. Diced is usually a little bit smaller. See how easy that goes? And the same thing here. I just slice it through, slice it through, turn. Here we go. You can save some of the tomato too. My grandmother would use every piece, as well as my mom. So, let's do that. Oops. Here we go. Throw that in the little trash can that I have there. And my roux is still cooking. I'm watching it. I'm standing right next to it. I do not leave that the side of the roux. Think of having a toddler. And you're not going <laughs> to... You're not going to leave a toddler alone for very long. So there we go. Look at that. Now I'm going to slice in here and we're going to chop up the onions. It's my little way of doing it. There we go. And you can mix these together with the celery because they're all gonna go in together. All right, we're gonna keep chopping and keep stirring up this roux. I got another knife out, as you can see. It's one of these, I think they're called the bird's, um, bird's beak, because it's like a bird's beak. And I got this, I, my mom had it, and I loved it, and every time I say I love something with my mother, she either gives it to me or it shows up in the mail. But this time, actually, um, my son bought it for me for my birthday, which I thought was really cool. I always say that I'm easy to buy birthday presents for. All right, so I'll be back. We're gonna start chopping. All right, we got the seven cloves of garlic. Come on, chop that up. Bring the chicken over. And actually, I, I just cleaned this. I mean, boiled it. And I, I actually like to do this with chicken because it tastes better in the gumbo. I like to shred it. You're going to use about a cup of chicken. And I let this cool down after I boiled it in water. But what I did is so that I could season it a little bit is I put, um, I'd say about a tablespoon or palmful of kosher salt, added some black pepper, you can see it on here, and I have some fresh parsley, I threw in like a little bit, and of course a garlic clove, and just threw that in there. And I could act, oh, and a couple pieces of celery. I could actually use that as part of the chicken broth if I want to. I might do it, I'm gonna taste it and see how it is. So anyway, a cup of cooked chicken is what we need. Okay, see the different color that we're getting? 
and I have the temperature on low. I might turn it up just a little bit. This thermidor stove is pretty powerful. So I have my piles of vegetables because the vegetables are going to go in next. The chicken and the andouille sausage and all that, that'll go in at the very end. But this is the one, this is the only thing that really, in my opinion, takes the longest time. And I just like to make sure, I know I'm like <laughs> taking up, making up all this noise. But anyway, this is the way it's starting to work. See, see this, I get in the habit of stirring. But you'll see how it puffs up, but you gotta keep stirring. Latte color. Okay, you see the color there? I'm not gonna make a bunch of noise, but I'm stirring and now it's getting a little darker. All right, look at that. It's nice and brown. So this is about 35 minutes from the time that I started. So what I'm gonna do is you kind of eyeball it. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna put in the vegetables now. So let's take these, here we go. The peppers. Mix that in there. I'm gonna turn on my fan. Put in the garlic. Yeah, be careful when you do what I just did. Make sure I don't need the pan on that high. Turn on low. Okay, so we're gonna saute these until they're soft. Doesn't that look beautiful? Mmm, smells good too. While this is sauteing, is I'm gonna slice up all this okra because that's gonna go in next, along with the chicken stock, and just cut it up little pieces like this. You can I even leave the tips on for the most part. Depends on how they look or how I feel. Actually, I do take them off, don't I? No, I don't. I'm gonna leave them in. So here we go. I'll be back. I mean, just cut them up into little pieces like this. And then we're gonna add the chicken stock, tomatoes, and, and uh, let it cook for about, who loves gumbo in the summertime? You gotta love gumbo in the summertime. I love chopping, can you tell? And it doesn't take that much time. Chop it up, and you're gonna be good to go. Oops. And again, try to put them in the same size so that they're all cooking. But I love fresh, fresh okra. It's Better. You can use frozen okra if you want, if, you can't, if it's not in season, but when I saw this, I'm like, oh, I am making gumbo. Okay, now that I have all the okra chopped, got enough okra? This is a, okra acts as a thickening agent. So what we're gonna do is, this is sauteed nice and soft, nice chocolatey looking, and we are going to add the, I'm gonna put in the okra first, because you're gonna add all this chicken stock. You're gonna put in the okra. I'm gonna turn up the temperature a little bit. And we're adding all this in here. in here and you add that quarter cup of ketchup too. I think you could probably add some spicy ketchup now that you have spicy ketchup available to you in the stores. And we're going to mix all this together. The ketchup. See how it looks. Oh, it's not cheap. 
64 ounces of chicken stock. Now, obviously we're not going to eat all this, but you can freeze it. And it's very good frozen. Well, you don't eat it when it's frozen. You eat it when you thaw it out. Get rid of that. And bring this up to a boil. And you can leave it uncovered, and I'm going to simmer it two and a half hours. So we'll be back. See ya. Oh, and then we're gonna add, I'm gonna chop up the andouille sausage and clean up the shrimp too, in the meantime. I don't think you wanna watch me cleaning up the shrimp, but that's what I'm gonna be doing. going to do now is we are going to open up the sandewy sausage and oh, cut myself because now we're going to end up in the emergency room. So basically I am going to slice this up, put it on the side. Actually what I've been doing is I have the chicken in here. And because we're going to put it all together, see how I'm cutting it in this slice? Think about when you're taking a spoon, you want to eat a, uh, a bite size. You don't want to make it this big. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this up and get it in, put it back into the refrigerator because this is going to be sauteing for two and a half hours. Okay, we still have about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes to go, but you can see how it's thickening up. Mmm, smells really good. Okay, now it's been two and a half hours and we are going to add some lemon, the juice of one lemon, and also put in all the ingredients. Tabasco sauce, any other type of hot sauce, but I like Cristal. Put a little on there. And get a little mess there. And we're going to try to this. It's a little hot. Temperature hot, not spicy hot. Mmm. 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 All the flavors. Are together. I like the basmati rice because the basmati rice basically kind of separates very nicely. And the shrimp, everything's bite sized. Remember, I was talking about earlier how you had the andouille sausage, actually, the little pieces of tomato. Here's the okra. And you can put a lot of it right on one spoon. The chicken, here's those little chicken, how I shredded it but it is good, enjoy. This is one of those dishes where you just wanna keep eating and eating and eating because it's tasty. So thanks for being here. If you like the video, I know it took a little longer, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, and also subscribe. There's a button down there that says subscribe. Click on that. And I love hearing comments. And if you have any questions, just ask me a question. But um, this whole project takes it out. I'd say three hours to make. 
but it is so well worth it. So see you next time in Josie's Fun Kitchen. And remember, you can always have a good time in the kitchen. And especially if you're watching here, you're going to have fun in Josie's Kitchen. Have a great one. See you next time.